Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Jay from the Big Buck Registry Deer Hunting Podcast, and we're here back for another live episode of BBR Live on Thursday night using the Blue Jeans app. And I am joined by Dusty Phillips down there in the corner. What's happening, and everybody? There he is. And we've got Jared Scheffler on tonight from Whitetail Adrenaline, and he was featured in a couple of our episodes in 069 Snooking for Whitetails. I came up with that, by the way. And uh, <laughs> episode 167, where we talked about your big Kansas whitetail hunt, just an epic tale. And Jared uh, went over every little detail with us. But Jared, welcome to BBR Live. Yeah, thanks for having me. No problem, <laughs> I, man. If, I, if my memory serves me right, you did come up with the whole snooking thing, didn't you? <laughs> I did. I did. Yeah. <laughs> well, I came up with the title. You came up with the snooking. You said okay. you said snooking, but that was the title of the show. You know, I and go maybe, back and maybe Jay might have came up with that too. I'm not exactly sure. I can't gotcha. remember that. My memory's not that good. I I'll, like, I'll take credit for it, of course. But I told him to break it down. I said you got to break. You got to break down this snooking. I this is this is a first time experience. Uh, the, oh, wait, what is snooking? I've never heard of snooking. Uh, snooking, snooking for whitetails. What are we doing? Do you, you want me to get a quick definition here for anybody that yeah, doesn't know? Yeah, yeah. Somebody is tuning in for the first time. Yeah, you're you're sneaking and looking for whitetails, so you're snooking. Yeah. Gotcha. It'll be a big thing in about 20, 20 years. Yeah. Everybody. Like I, I was I was I was like, uh, what's that Jersey Shore the snooky? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Even. <laughs> that's awesome. We got a few people tuning in already. We got Darren Short. Uh, we've got Brandon Stephen from Wisconsin. Billy Dawes back in the house. He's been joining us routinely every every week. What's up, gentlemen? How are you? So very cool. Yeah, I think we'll like feel. Jay's... Go ahead. Sorry. Jay Scott just. Jay Scott just joined us right there on the live feed. I did. <laughs> you you guys are all up technical. I just got my phone here. I don't I can't see who's in or who's out. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. You just you just keep hunting the big white till Jared. We'll take care of the rest. <laughs> so uh, tell us about your uh your video editing. We did we were chatting about that a little bit before we got on the show and you're saying that this time of year is where you're you're basically hanging out in pajamas most of the time. And yeah. uh, doing a lot of editing, uh, video editing for your DVDs. Correct, correct. Yeah, a lot of people wake up and and get all dressed up to go to work. I wake up, put on my pajamas, and go to work. That's that's my <laughs> life. Right now. From the from the bed, sometimes straight to the computer, and then breakfast, or sometimes to breakfast and then to the computer. But basically, it's bed, it's eat, sleep, and work right now, literally to a T. And wow. And uh, I don't know, this, this, I got about three months left, or no, not even, uh, ouch, uh, two months left of editing. Uh, it's usually about a three, three and a half month project that consumes about 12 to 1500 hours. And so it's, it's not a 40 hour a week job right now. And I, I turn into a hermit, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just glad I don't have to do it for six months or 12 months out of the year, you know, working 100 and 100, 100 to 110 hour day or weeks typically is right. what it is. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, but you know what? In the fall, I get to be out there in the woods and, you know, filming and hunting. So I guess gotcha. you, take the good, you take the good with the bad. Right. So, yeah, are you in your house right now? Is this where you live? Yes. Yep. Correct. I, gotcha. I tried the office a few years ago, but it just felt like I was going to work too much. So I, uh, my productivity wasn't as good. So I just, I like <laughs> working out of where I live. Right. So. You have, uh, do you have the big buck room somewhere in your house? You know, I really don't. Um, really? I, oh, interesting. I, I, I can, you know, maybe take you through a little walkthrough here. I mean. Yeah. Can you show us a couple this, of your, your, your mounts my, maybe? Yeah, this is my messy living room right here. All right. Uh, nice. You know, this this is case we get broke into. Of course, haven't had to use that yet. That's good. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> kind of, if you can see. This is where I edit. And I've got a few mounts up here. Uh, of course, I haven't even, I haven't got the big one mounted yet like the actual rack mounted yet he built 
and got down. I'm so busy with everything else. Back in there, I got, you can kind of see it's kind of dark, but that's most of my. I just don't know where I live. And a place that just worked out really the world. I rent. And so I, I just haven't really set this place up. So, you know, it's not gotcha. like a big cabinet or whatever, but right. this is it. So this is what I've been working on lately. So, yeah. Very cool, man. Cool. I we were getting, yeah. so, I think, better reception in your kitchen or wherever you were, wherever you came from. I don't I'll know why. But... Okay. All right, we're back. All right. Yeah, much better reception there. I'm gonna see if we've got <laughs> any sure. questions. Questions for Jim. Thank you for the tour. That was excellent. It was like a, a crib tour yeah, that well, Dusty and I well, have, not, have dreamt about doing. Not, yeah, it sounds like the tour didn't really work out because of the reception, but it, it, we did. We got to see quite a bit, but it was doing some oh. of that that weird alien sound. Oh. Or, but we got to see. We got the images. That's the important piece. We got to see okay. kind of where things happen. So that was good. What's happening, uh, Skip Peterson? Thanks for tuning in with us. Hey, Skip, what's going on, man? You got right, if you guys. Yeah, Skip's on in, in the in the uh -huh. house tonight. If you guys have any questions for Jared while we've got him here for a short stint, uh, now's the time to write down any questions that you have. And we should probably take a quick break here, Dusty, to, to tell everybody who we're sponsored by tonight. Uh, tonight's live broadcast is sponsored by Culver Scouting Cameras and the Horny Buck Seed Company. Very good. Thank you. I've got the Horny Buck Seed Company on. I got like Got the nice American flag on the side. It's pretty cool. Of course, I'm sporting my Whitetail Adrenaline T-shirt that my good buddy Jared sent me a while back. I got to say, this is one of my favorite T-shirts, Jared. And your hat that you sent me was one of my favorite hats. So you guys, you must spend some time picking out your your apparel. Yeah, yeah, that's always a fun time, too, getting it right. I mean, it's we've gotten it dialed in pretty good now, but uh, you'd think that, you know, getting a good fitting cap or a T-shirt is, you know, easy, but it it's there's always little details and of course right. i'm too picky but but uh but yeah well all in all people seem to really like it so yeah, yeah. darren you short know, asked oh, yep sorry good i don't mean to cut on it uh darren short asked uh jared when is the projected release date for this year's uh dvds well i uh like usual we're, we're behind schedule our deadline is to hopefully have them out for a deer, it's it's a show in Wisconsin called Deer Fest. It's I think that's August 5th through the 7th. So right now that's our projected deadline. We've always hit that, but just just by the nick of time, usually we get them overnight shipped from from our production plant in New Jersey that we use and get them to the show. So we're gonna be we're gonna be pretty close to that deadline. I think this year, hopefully we don't miss it. So that's August for sure. I'd say. Awesome. Cool. Billy Doss says, uh, he said, Billy, he said, uh, could you tell Jared hello from me? I love Whitetail Adrenaline. So you've got a big fan down there in North Carolina. Cool. Jared. Well, thank yeah. Thank you. Do you, um, you guys, you guys don't have a lot of sponsors, right? I mean, that, I think one of your things that you sell a lot of product, you're always on the road going from, uh, show to show, selling, setting up your big booth and selling T-shirts and hats and DVDs. Is that still your your plan for for this year? Yeah, yeah. I mean, for we've been in business for uh, well, it's going to be ten years, is what it's going to be. And we've always been a sponsor-free company. That's the way we've always kind of wanted it to remain. Um, you know, I don't, I can't for say what the future is going to bring. I mean, we may need to go down that road depending on how the the DVD sales go in the future. We, we Thankfully, they've kept going up for us, but, mm -hmm. you know, in the future, it's going to be, uh, you know, basically everything's going to be downloadable, and uh, so we might not be able to fund it as well with a download platform, and so we may have to potentially go a different direction. But uh, for now, I mean, we're moving forward just as we always have. We like it that way we just go out hunting and have a great time so gotcha can you pre-order dvds before they're released 
Uh, you can, but only for about a week or two because okay. I, don't put, I don't put the pre-order out until we have an actual for sure date. Um, it's just too many things can, can – it's too far out, you know. Uh, and so if we get a bunch of people pre-ordering and then we have a date set and we don't hit that date, then we got – 300 emails or however many people to get back to like hey it's going to be another week or two or whatever so we just we just wait so yeah okay that makes sense i'm just going to check field some more questions here billy doll asks what's your uh, most memorable hunt you've uh, ever been on <laughs> um you know obviously that that's probably uh the big one i got a couple of years ago um and not really because it was such a big deer as much as it was the way it unfolded right um up until that point my most memorable hunt before that was a fairly a, a smaller buck than several that i had shot but just the way the hunt unfolded made it a, a special hunt um but that one kind of took the place of that with everything that went on so yeah right and you know if somebody's watching they don't uh, they don't know what jared and his gang do they hunt a lot of public ground and it's uh you know, a lot of skill and a lot of running, gunning and uh, driving and and glassing and it's intent. <laughs> you never seen and a lot that. of and a lot of not skill too. Right. If you if you've never seen a DVD <laughs> from White Tail Adrenaline, you get your hands on. <laughs> yeah. A, 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 You're a missing out, what, man. Yeah. A lot of what the hell are we doing or why did we do that? Right. Uh, but the, <laughs> in the end, though, it's it's crazy. It's like one of the things that. It leads you up to a success story like like you've never seen before. That's right, the fun right. part. Like it's a whole lot of fails, but then in the end, it's like, man, look at this. They got him. Look, no way. You know. Right. Yeah. Like, so I, whatever. That up because the, the next video is going to have a lot of a lot of uh, spot and stocks that went south, and uh, the way the the one finally unfolds is just so like crazy how it's like, okay, all these other ones that were actually should have been slam dunk easy situations. It's like, you know, we didn't have our ducks in a row. And then we get this situation where it's like, there's no way this is going to work. And it actually just works like stupid good. And it's just like, that's just the way it is. You know, the <laughs> easy one, it's like the slam dunks. It's just like football, you know, it's like, it's like, why did they lose to that team? You know, they're so good or whatever. And then, it's, right. you know, it's like, the same. Like, like probably my most memorable thing about your DVDs is like when you go out there and you got the fish nets on, like, like oh, a couple yeah. of years oh, ago, yeah. like fish netting on and a, <laughs> and a neon t-shirt and you're going hunting. That, yeah. That, you know, that worked pretty good until I started. That's my uh, But, uh, it, it would have worked good, too. We just never got around to finishing those. We were going to tie a little bit of stuff onto them, and basically we wanted to make a little bit of a lightweight, a lot more lightweight ghillie suit than the norm, sort of, kind of a hybrid. But, uh, but yeah, because they were unfinished, it made it almost more entertaining, right? <laughs> it's like, what the hell is that? <laughs> what are they wearing? Yeah, I never know what you're going to be wearing. You did some, you spray painted some, uh, some, blue jeans or something you bought at walmart or something one year didn't you yeah it was khakis actually that's khakis that's some khakis fancy. and spray painted them <laughs> yeah fancy being the artist that he is he actually did the uh the paint work on the we we had thermals and khakis and that's what we shot that big deer with was those spray painted khakis and paint. <laughs> <laughs> that's great from walmart he he actually called me from walmart he's like i'm at walmart what size you need or what size you wear <laughs> so i mean that's all we didn't have right. the cameras pulling for that and it didn't make video but that's what we were wearing so. shout out to uh jim morris and morris sporting goods for joining in with us thanks for tuning in with us jim we uh appreciate you jumping on but you know another favorite thing of mine is like after you guys kill a deer and there's our kill a good buck and there's another buck like that got away here comes the van up the road and like you guys are shuffling across the field as fast as you can go with these deer and throwing them up on top of this van it, it's it's a great it's a great dvd i'm telling you if you haven't got one tell us where you can get them at jared uh we've got we got a number of retailers uh we got a dealer list on our website so people can go on there and they can see if there's a dealer in their area. Otherwise, 
The other two ways is to buy them direct online, or uh, we, we do a number of different shows throughout the country in a year, and that list is typically on the website uh, a few months before the, the next year. So we'll, uh, we'll be at the shows as well. So those are the three ways to get them. Gotcha. Yeah, it's uh, definitely it's intense. I'm telling you, it's. I had it on at a birthday party in my garage. I've got I don't know a 50 inch flat screen in my garage, and I had a white tail general on DVD on, and people were over there yelling because they're like, "Yeah, they got him!" <laughs> <laughs> hey, they finally got one. <laughs> right? Yeah, it was pretty cool. Well, I mean, that's what keeps it. That's what keeps it, you know, fun and and engaging though is all those failures keep you kind of addicted to some degree. I mean, it, it kind of makes you want to give up, give up and throw the towel in sometimes, but it keeps you wanting more. So. Yeah, for sure. Let's see if we have any other questions here. Uh, Mike Behrman's joined us. What's up, fellas? What's up, Mike? How are you? And let's see. Billy Dahl just commented, have you ever set up a booth at the Dixie Deer Classic in North Carolina. Mm. No, we we haven't done that one. That one's just it's it's a lot further of a drive than uh, than we're yeah I guess I mean we're up way up in Wisconsin, um, and uh, so it's just a long ways to go. Um, so we haven't made it that far, I guess. Gotcha. So, sorry do about you that. Usually, <laughs> do you usually drive to all your places, Jared? All the shows, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we, got, we got a truck. You know, we got to haul the haul the booth out there and everything like that and right do all the setup and stuff so yeah, run got... run through the list of hunting units you guys have drove around over the last 10 years oh that's yeah. kind of fun. I've never been asked that before uh let's see <laughs> the first the first one was actually we had a we had a minivan i think it was a 1997 grand caravan if i remember right and i was I didn't have a lot of money at the time. I think it was actually my dad's I had borrowed, and uh, <laughs> that's what we used. And then uh, we had a Concorde, a Chrysler Concorde car, and then we had a <laughs> we had we had the stable. That's of course the uh, the '99 stable with the uh, salvage title. It was a white car, pretty beat up. It was totaled out from an insurance company for a reason. Uh, <laughs> That one, of course, is a legend. And then we've got the Taurus. That one, that one ended up going 265,000 miles. And uh, that one was, you know, wow. pretty, pretty legendary as well. The probably the all-time best vehicle we ever had was the uh, 88 Ford Econoline conversion. Yes. I was gonna say the Econoline, man. That's the best one. That's yeah, my favorite. No, not that. <laughs> And, and I mean, not just from entertainment standpoint, but I mean, from luxury, just you talk about <laughs> putting four or five guys in there and being comfortable. Right. I mean, it's right. like in late, you get in those chairs that were, you know, back in the, I don't know if there's government restrictions, like we can't put bumper <laughs> vehicles anymore or what, but you right. jump into one of those conversion vans in the late eighties, early nineties. And it's just like, I want to hang out here for a while. You know? Right. Yeah. Those things are mint. I mean, it's really, it's really tempting and hard not to track it crack a beer while you're in one. I mean, it just is. <laughs> it's what just comfortable. The, what about the Suburban? I remember you guys riding deep in the Suburban for a little while. Okay, the the white Suburban? Yeah. Okay. No, that was, was, was it a white? Or, yeah. That was it white or two-toned? Uh, no, it should have been white. I think it was white. If you're talking about the one in our first video 10, 10 years ago, 10 seasons ago, um, that would have been a white, white 89 Suburban, a little lift kit in it, uh, sharp rig. That was actually a really nice rig, too nice for <laughs> for, what, for what fits what we do. I mean, the thing about it, travel so many gravel roads and, and you know, I mean, they just, they get beat up. I mean, if you took a new vehicle out there and treated them like we treat them in a year, I mean, they wouldn't be worth nearly as much. All right. <laughs> So yeah. It's almost not worth it. <laughs> no, uh, you guys were driving a van, and when you killed your big buck, is that correct? Correct. Yeah, the uh, the minivan. For a couple of years, that minivan was too nice. It was an 07, well taken care of. Uh, no rust at the time. Of course, there's plenty now. But right. But uh, I remember, I remember watching the DVD, and you say, "Hey, man, don't 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 
he's like neutral dropping it, trying to take off to get back to where he come from. You're like, oh, man, don't tear the van up, dude. Don't tear the van up. <laughs> Careful, respect the van. <laughs> Going through some of these questions, Skip. Not quite sure what the question is, uh, Skip. See if you can retype that question about the tires. I'm not sure what the question is. Speaking of the Dixie Classic, by the way, guys, we have our guest this weekend is Heather Shepard, who is heavily in, involved with the Dixie Classic. Uh, she's going to be on the podcast this weekend. Wait, wait till you hear the alligator story and the, the the story that she kills an alligator with a knife. How about that, Jared? Wow. That, uh, yeah. That's not level there. <laughs> yeah. That's intense. Everybody, everybody likes the van. Brandon says that the van was bad. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. See, I don't. I can't see the comments right now, but they they love the van. I know. I'm actually. I'm, I'm about fifty fifty about getting a, a another conversion van for this year. Um, <laughs> so uh, the pr the problem with the eighty eight is it was just a little bit too unreliable. I mean, too much like motor transmission kind of. I mean, I can't deal with those kind of problems, but I can deal with the little things, you know, a wheel bearing or a tire, whatever. I can deal with that. But right, that's a great question for Skip here. Yeah, that is a good yeah. question, Skip. I like that. Yeah, I keep I keep about a thousand dollars cash in the in the vehicle just in case you know we ever do drop a motor. We're just gonna go run and buy the cheapest piece of crap we can on Craigslist, and that. <laughs> What was, did you say Skip had a question? Yeah, Skip has a question. I'll, uh, Dustin, why don't you take the Skip question? I'll do the Dennis question. He says, uh, how many tires have you changed in your life? Ooh, I don't know, a lot. Um, phew. Probably about the same amount of tickets I got in my life. For <laughs> and all that fun stuff. Oh, I that's funny. Pro probably 30, 40. I did buy an impact here, so. I feel like I'm cheating now a little bit. Last year I bought an impact, got a good deal on one. Uh, so I keep that. And I was surprised at how much I've actually used it in the, what, eight months that I've had it or whatever. So that, I guess, tells you how many tires I go through. So. And it doesn't seem to matter if they're new tires or, or half threads or, or, or less. I mean, it's like you pick up stuff everywhere you go. You drive that <laughs> Brandon Stevens says, well, a tire repair kit company would be a good sponsorship for sure. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Dennis, Dennis Willem wants to know when you're going to be heading back to Michigan, Michigan. so you can hang out. Yep. Uh, probably probably next year, uh, probably the Lance and Deer and Turkey Expo. Will, that should be the next. I think we're going to do that show again next year. I think the dates are going to work out for us. So. Nice. We'll see back there i think dennis is over there by detroit if i remember right so that's a little bit of a drive but hopefully you can make it let's see darren short wants to know if you fed shay this year and did he tag out uh yeah <laughs> which one you want me to answer first <laughs> let's do did you feed shay let's let's so start with there yeah he tagged out right <laughs> uh, no he did he tagged out in what two days of hunting or something like that. He only had a Kansas tag. We didn't do much hunting in Wisconsin. He's he's pretty tied up. He's pretty busy himself right now with a lot of things. Uh, being a business owner, he's got a separate little business going on. So, uh, but uh, did I feed him? I, uh, yeah, I fed him. I fed him. I fed him <laughs> one. So. Okay. I mean, he had to feed himself, but no. <laughs> right. Todd Mead just joined. Uh, what's going on, Todd? Good to see you. Let's see, Dennis Roback. So I'll make I'll make it for sure, Jared. As long as we can all have dinner together and a couple of drinks. So I, I guess Dennis wants you to come hang out. Sounds like a plan. Kurt Geyer just joined from the Working Man's or the the was was it Working Bow Hunters podcast? I, think, I believe it is. What's up, Kurt? How are you, man? Where uh, were you guys planned out to hunt this fall, Jared? Um, well, some of the some of the tags we're still waiting to hear back on the draw results, but um, we should uh, we should be doing. I don't know. I got a lot on my plate for this year. 
Um, I've been trying to tackle these elk with a bow for a couple of seasons. I've been laying kind of quiet on it, but they've been really kicking my butt. So um, I'll probably be doing Montana this year, Idaho, uh, New Mexico maybe, and uh, Colorado for deer and potentially elk too, and Kansas and Iowa. I won't be doing it. I don't. Well, actually, I might be. I might be moving to Iowa. So I'm not yeah. sure yet. Um, you, got on, you got a lot on your plate. What's that? You got a lot on your plate for this fall coming up. It should be super okay. interesting. Yeah. We got a few other things we're doing too, a few other states too. So, too. so we got a lot, a lot on the plate for sure. No doubt. Yeah. Hey, for everybody that's uh, joining us, if you don't mind, hit the share and uh, spread the word with your friends that we're on here with uh, Jared from Whitetail Adrenaline and give us a, a like if you're enjoying yourself and uh, if you got any questions post them up we can ask yeah. Jared. we'll relay the question and try to get a good answer but if you don't mind share it and give us some likes and and uh have your friends join in with us we're having a great time over here i have to apologize to kurt guy i stumbled on the name of his podcast which is entirely possible when you're doing a live show of course, you know, when we we can hide all this stuff on when we're doing the, the regular pre recorded stuff. Working class bow hunters. Oh, Kurt, I apologize for that. It's a, it's a great podcast. Go check it out. Really enjoy that podcast myself. But yeah, I screwed that up. So sorry, Kurt. What's, what's the uh, what's the little Angie's Cantalina there, Jared? Oh the, you can actually read this? Yeah, yeah man. Um no, I did a fishing trip here. And uh, kind of recently, I actually just had to get away from the computer a little bit. And uh, this is a little place up in Duluth we just stopped into. And I just was like, hey, I want that shirt, you know. So that's all it is. It's a little place up in Duluth, Minnesota, um, right off the tip of Lake Superior, for those of you that don't know where Duluth is. So, yeah. I'm not laughing at you, Jared. Kurt, just coming back. What's the name, yeah, of, the name of this show? What's Go the ahead. name of this? That's funny. <laughs> You know, I, I, uh -huh, I, Kurt, you're I, funny. I, I didn't hear you right away, but I, I thought I knew you were talking about his, his yeah. bow hunter, and I was going to, but I was like, I better not say. Next time, you just correct me. Thought. Just correct me next time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Name of the, I don't know. We, we've been kind of bounce around. You. I was going to save you. Oh, you should have saved me. Oh, you got the Brita? The Brita working there? I don't know what this is. Yeah, that's the <laughs> I got a 30 pack of bush light in there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Dennis just asked if you're still drinking bush light and Coors light. Coors light. Oh, and, bush light. and Kurt says you owe him a yingling. I do. I do. You know, I might have a few around here, actually, if I dig around. But I haven't had a yingling in quite a while. Yeah. No, that, you know, I used to really like that and I still do, but it gets a little heavy, so. Got to change it up every now and again. This time of year, I don't actually really. Yeah, I'm that 30 pack's been in my fridge for a little while, so uh, don't be <laughs> fooled. I don't, I don't really tap into much of that this time of year. So if I do, I just crack one at the computer while I'm working, which I did actually last night, and I usually forget about that, forget about it that it's actually sitting there. Of course, I'm not trying to get buzzed up when I'm trying to put together a video, but. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that doesn't go so good. <laughs> so what else can we? Yeah, what else can we expect from the this uh, next season of DVDs coming out here? The next the next video is coming out. Um, it should be a pretty good gun video overall. Uh, okay. The, uh, we got some pretty good drives and stuff like that. We did an elk hunt again. That turned out pretty good. Elk gun hunt. Like oh, I said. Wow. The Stuff I've been working on I, I want to do a separate video that's my plan for that um, as far as the bow footage goes the I mean I, that's what I've been mainly working on lately and I mean it's just we had a lot of encounters a lot of situations that that uh, you know we of course we wish we would have went a different direction we would have capitalized a little bit more but but we had some pretty tough conditions overall for we're trying to sneak in on deer uh, a lot of quiet days that made it a little bit more difficult so we were getting visuals getting a lot of visuals but conditions for pulling off the uh, you know closing that distance were were a little bit tougher than the norm but we still uh, we still 
we've we've got a lot of footage. Let's just put it that way. We got a lot of good footage coming out for the bow stuff. It would have been nice to get a kill or two more, but you know what? It seems like people really like watching, you know, the struggle and and all that. So there's definitely right. there's definitely going to be plenty of that in the next bow video. Yeah, uh, I think that. I think that's why we relate to your videos because the struggle's real, you know, and that's that's. I don't think anybody's got it easy out there. So right. <laughs> finally, some somebody puts a puts a real show on on DVD. That's what we love about it. Yeah. Is there ever a chance? Is there ever a chance that you could pull off a a bloopers DVD? Because I'm sure that there's all kinds of stuff that you guys get on film that that doesn't make the cut. No, I could make all... the cut. Yeah, I mean, to, to be honest with you, it's actually funny you bring that up because it'd be a lot easier to make the video 10 hours long than to get it down to three four hours i mean just because there's so much i mean you you refine the cut of the video and then it's like man we got to get this condensed down even more but you have a hard time letting go of stuff like what you're talking right. about like it's like god that's kind of funny but it it's really affecting the flow from getting the story from one point to the next it's just it's like man i'd love to keep it but it just it's got to go um, so yeah, I mean, maybe someday we can come out with a bloopers. The first few videos we had, we actually had a bonus cut section, you know, on the, on the video and right, you can go right. watch all these extra bonus cuts. It's kind of funny. I forgot about this one and then somehow it came popped into my head, but this was like nine years ago. It was in the second video in the bonus cuts. It was when we were still hunting out of tree stands. Jim dropped his, he had a 70 pound Hoyt Tri-Tech. And I think he dropped it out of the tree is what happened or something. I can't remember. It fell out of the tree or something. And uh, get down there, well, the string had come off the bow. And, uh, w of course, we wanted to hunt the rest of the night. Well, we used a tree limb to, <laughs> co to compress the limbs enough to get it back on there. I used to work in a bow shop. So, you know, I pretty much, I mean, we found this long limb that was about 10 10 feet long hanging off a tree that was just the perfect height and we, I got Jim on one end of it I was like just go slow now and we yeah we were able to compress the bow and put the string back on and <laughs> never had a problem with it so very cool excellent but that was in the bonus cuts of that video so um yeah. You guys are definitely creative. Like, you know, that's, that's that's definitely one of the other things that I noticed about your your tactics. You're just creative. You know, you never uh, never out of the game. You always find new ways to go hunting, and it doesn't matter what you're missing in your attire. You you figure it out. Right. You, you got to be adaptive. You got to be yeah, very adaptive. Yeah. Adaptive, exactly. Darren yeah. Shorts. Go ahead. Darren Shorts says, "Love the way you edit music into the." the tense moments and he wants to know is there any cool encounters with a decoy coming up on this year's dvds any let me think about that oh, don't Let's spill do. the beans but is there any cool encounters there there is actually one i it's kind of funny you bring that up because i just that's one one thing i've been working on for the last 48 hours is a is a hunt that involves a pretty pretty bizarre situation we should have never got the deer but we ended up getting the deer and it involved the decoy uh, definitely couldn't have, I don't think, made it work without the, the decoy. But the thing about the decoy is there's a lot of times and a lot of situations where it's not a good tool to use. And then there's some situations where it can really be your, your savior. So it's just, it, it, can, it can hurt you as much as it can help you if you don't use it right or pick the right times to use it or use it in the wrong way. So, I mean, it's no, it's no, uh, Hey, we just grab this decoy and run behind it and run up the deer. It don't, it's not like that. So, um, but yeah, we'll have a little bit coming out in the next video with a little bit of the decoy stuff. So, awesome. You can you catch these questions coming in, Jay? Yeah, I've got uh, Javin and Tyler. Yeah. You want to take Javin? We we kind of covered that a little bit earlier. Yeah, and, uh, Javin just. Uh, he missed it a little bit earlier there, Jared. So we'll ask again. He says, uh, "Will you ever consider sponsors? Why or why not?" Um, it's one of those things where I'd I'd rather keep doing it the way we've been doing it without them. Um, not I shouldn't say without them. Like in a I don't mean it in like a degrading way or whatever. It's just you know we've got we can really just have complete control of the production and the the outcome of it, and we can show all those failures to a degree that. You know, with the right sponsors on board, 
maybe it wouldn't be an issue to keep showing and keep the video exactly the way it is. I wouldn't have an issue with it, I don't think, so long as we could we could keep it the integrity and the authenticness of what we've always had, as long as that wouldn't be tampered with, then, you know, I'd that'd be about the only way that I'd really consider it right now. Um, you know, down the road, who knows, maybe I can't say for sure what I'm not pursuing anything currently, I guess. So. Right on, right on. Yeah, for sure. That that, that answers the question for Javelin. Mm -hmm. Let's see, there was a question that came in from Tyler Welch. Said, were you able to get within range of any up dogs? Of any up dogs? Up dogs. Up dogs. <laughs> I'm not sure what that uh, means exactly. Maybe it was a typo. Maybe, yeah. But, uh, um, I actually got a pretty nice buck last year. Um, just kind of got lucky. Um, and the one day, kind of, a, I'm going to save most of it for the video, but let's just say he, I, I had him at two and a half steps. And I was caught in a situation where I couldn't draw the bow, like just the way my body had to be to be able to be that close. Right. To the deal. Um, and uh, so that didn't work out well for me. And then two days later, we got another chance where he was back on this piece of public and uh, we got in and I got to seven yards or, or basically we got to about 30. He came the rest. He made it to seven yards. Um, and there's a pretty good story behind that whole deal too. So that's, that's the closest. I think, I think that's the closest one we got on video last year. So Tyler, uh, uh Tyler comments. He said, <laughs> uh, "Come out weird, like it was up dog or something." And he said, "What's up, dog?" Is what he was saying. Oh, <laughs> I figured. <laughs> yeah, it's just just a typo. Uh, Jeff Thornton and six others just shared the video. Thank you for sharing the video, guys. And uh, anybody that's just joining us, if you could share it on your Facebook or your other social media platforms, we'd appreciate it. We're just having a good time talking about deer hunting with Jared Scheffler here. And uh, Nick Welch, he wants to know if you have any plans to come to South Dakota. And he uh, said uh, lots of great public land hunts out there, and he tags are easy to get. There, there is, there is, there's a lot of good opportunity in South Dakota. Um, and that one might be on the list for this year. I'm just, there's certain states that I know we are going to go to and certain states that we're waiting to hear draw results on. And then if we don't get drawn, we, you know, we might consider other states like South Dakota. Um, I tried South Dakota a few years ago, but it was at a tough time of the year. I knew that, but it was the only time of the year that I could really make it work. And I seen some nice bucks, but they were mainly, you know, just off the public on the private ground. And it wasn't right. a successful hunt for me as far as getting one, but I saw some nice deer, but we just haven't made our way back. Gotcha. Very good guys. Well, what do you, what do you think? I think it's, uh, we're pushing about half hour or so, which is about the amount of time we allotted for tonight's show. So I think we'll wrap it up unless we get a, a couple more questions coming in here. We'll just kind of keep an eye on it. Um, but Jared, where can we, where can we reach you or find you on social media or, uh, if we want to grab a DVD, how do we reach you? Uh, as far as getting the DVD goes, we got the retail, the different retailers, they're listed on our website shows that we're going to be at. They're listed on the website. Otherwise you can buy direct on the website. My sister, she handles all the, all the shipping and stuff. She's yep. really good about orders out quick and everything. Um, and then we've got our Facebook Whitetail Adrenaline page, um, which right now this time of year, I'm not really active, too active at all with, with a lot of that stuff, uh, just being so into the production and the, the editing aspect. I mean, that pretty much consumes most of my life right now. So right. Uh, not, I'm not super active in that. But uh, so I do apologize if people have messaged me personally or – we're on the page and haven't heard anything back or haven't heard anything back in a while. I apologize about that. I mean, I appreciate everyone's support over the years and everything, but right now it's like in order to get this video out by August, I'm literally going from the bed to the computer, like in my right. pajamas. I wake up, put on pajamas and go to work. And it's like, that's where I live right now. So, uh, yeah. How many, how many hours do you spend editing over the course uh, of a year? 
this this project the last project was the biggest one that was probably about a sixteen hundred dollar project i guess is uh yeah you know, we we for surely know it was over fourteen hundred um this project that I'm working on right now it's probably gonna come in at about twelve to fourteen hundred hours um it's gonna be another big project, and we do it in about three and a half months so <laughs> it's uh and most of that like you know i do myself. Last year, I brought in uh, a couple different guys to kind of give me a hand later on in the project. That worked out pretty good. That chipped out about three, four hundred hours. Um, so that definitely alleviated my time some. But uh, yeah, it's a lot. I mean, if you think about it, I mean, uh, most most people work that, that work a forty-hour week in in six months. They do a thousand hours. Well, you know, I know I'm going to pack in a thousand hours in a three-month period for sure. So it's, <laughs> I don't know, it's, uh, you know, it's a great, it, it's, it's great because I get to be out there in the fall and everything, but this time, I, this time of the year, I sometimes question, what am I doing, you know, <laughs> when you, when you pack that many hours day after day after day, you know, and right. it be a lot, so. Well, it's a completely different environment, right? I mean, you're going from working in a probably quiet environment, staring at a computer screen to going into the woods and enjoying the out, outside, which is, you know, completely opposite of two completely opposite right. spectrums of life. Yeah, right, right. Well, and don't get me wrong. I enjoy editing, but you do anything for 16, 18 hours at a crack for, you know, two, three weeks. Sometimes it's 40, 50 days straight of that, you know, right. and there's going to be, you know, last year, a lot of people don't know this, but last year to get that video done for Deer Fest, I worked straight for 57 hours without sleep. Well, I remember well you, yeah, I remember yeah. you telling me that. Yeah, that was I crazy. Sister, I called my sister like 48 hours in. And I said, come on over here. I'll pay you to sit here and make sure I don't fall asleep at the computer. Right. And the computer had to do something for it was like five or ten minutes. And I said, I'm going to catch five, ten minutes. Make sure you wake me up as soon as it's done with this little task. So <laughs> that's, that's the only thing. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I remember, that's, that's, I remember that. Life. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's and and to be honest with you, once you do it, you know, once you do it enough, you're you just you know that you can. Your mind knows that you can, so you can, you know. I'm sure I'll be up for multiple 40-hour cracks at the end of this project because that's just what it's going to take. But um, anyways, I won't bore everybody with my computer. <laughs> life. All right, just throw out some really good so, DVDs right around August, yeah. so we get all jazzed up yeah. for deer season again. So, hey, Dusty, you want to run through the sponsors again? Yeah, tonight's live broadcast was sponsored by Culver Sky and Cameras and the Horny Buck Seed Company. All right, very good. Jared, thank you for joining us on yeah. BBR Live. And you know, we're going to be doing this every Thursday night as, as long as we can. As long as we have somebody that wants to talk to us, uh, we'll have them on. So, um, thanks, a thanks a lot, guys, for having me and everything. Yeah, Appreciate cool. It. Hang on, Jared. I'm going to kill the recording. And we'll, we'll, we'll chat a little bit off offline. Okay. But thank All you, right. everybody, for joining us, and we'll see you yeah. next week. Thanks a lot, guys.